fire engine. Flying Scotsman and my brothers were all green, explained Gordon one night in the shed. It was all very well in its way, but now I prefer my blue. It makes me different, you see, and that's very suitable for an important engine like me. The engines on our old line used to be blue, remembered Donald, but near as dark as we are. Dog and me never were, though. We had to be black, so blue makes a nice change. I like my green too, agreed Henry. I'd hate to be red like James. People would think I was a fire engine. At least people can see me coming, retorted James. I don't disappear into the background like some engines I could mention. If it wasn't for the noise, you'd need a yellow and black front like Mavis. And Riss' protests were drowned in the laughter of the other engines, and he went to sleep wondering how to pay James out. Henry was still cross next morning. What can be wrong? What can be wrong? One of the coaches anxiously as Henry pulled noisily away from the big station. Do come along, do come along, Henry snorted impatiently. They had a fast run, but it didn't improve Henry's temper. It bumped the coaches when they reached the end of the line, and again when it backed onto them for the return journey. It simmered angrily while the fireman fastened the coupling. No one noticed a rattle from beneath Henry's footplate as he snorted away, and soon the train was running well. Hurry, 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 puffed Henry. Faster and faster they went. At last, Henry began to feel better. Suddenly, he heard a crack from below his cab. Look out, shouted the driver. He applied the brakes while the fireman scrambled forward to the footplate. He was just in time. Both men watched in horror as a widening gap opened between Henry and his tender. Henry stopped as soon as he could. The automatic brake halted his tender and the train some way behind. We must stop Henry's fire, said the driver urgently. It would be dangerous to let him boil dry now that we can get more water from the tender. The fireman agreed. Sorry, old boy, he said to Henry. Just when we got it going nicely, too. But if you hadn't banged about so much, you wouldn't have broken your tender coupling. While the fireman dealt with the fire, the driver went back to tell the signalman what had happened. When he returned, he found Henry completely hidden in a huge cloud of black smoke which billowed from beneath his cab. The fireman emerged, choking. Henry's fire set the sleepers alight, he spluttered. You stay here, I'm going to phone the fire brigade. The driver eased Henry clear of the blaze, and then Edward came to take his train on. Henry felt most uncomfortable. Workmen made Henry a temporary coupling. They rejoined him to his tender, and then the driver and fireman lit a new fire and drove him gently home. Edward, who had of course seen everything, told the others. They were careful what they talked about that night. As for Henry, he was touchy on the subject of fires for some time afterwards, but James was quick to notice that from then on, Henry stopped making rude remarks about the colour of fire engines. <laughs>